Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I'm your host, Carmen Milagro, and this is From the Ground Up. As many of you already know, like most of my guests, I wear a lot of hats. I'm also the host at Wellness 360 on Expand ITV, the coaching channel for those who coach and those who are looking for coaches. I'm also currently the founder of a new startup and the creator of Soothe BioRF, a bioresonance frequency enhanced hemp CBD massage and muscle serum designed to help people feel better using plant medicine and vibrational frequency. I'm really proud of this project and we'll get into that some other time. I'm also the co-founder of CBD University with my partners in Mexico and the founder of Davina.store. And I'm also the lead singer of the Blue Moon Gypsies and I have a few other roles too. I consider myself an entrepreneurist and I host this show because many people like me start with a dream and you start planning and you're building a company or career. You're going step by step and brick by brick from the ground up. And sometimes there are people and incubators out there that are quite predatory and who may take advantage. However, in my experience, I've found that there are so many people out there that actually do want to help you, that they are genuinely interested in your success and want to support you. And these are the people that I want to be able to showcase. So when you start building that dream of helping other people or providing a service, how do you do it? How do you navigate the challenges that life throws you? How do you avoid making mistakes along the way? And how do you stay inspired? Some of my guests are CEOs or coaches. They're producers or engineers. They're educators and journalists, authors, singers, tech gurus, investors, even an occasional celebrity or two. And as you saw in a previous webisode, I've been able to bring you a former deputy assistant to the president of the United States. And I'm always thrilled when some of the most successful people on the planet join us like today. My guests come from various backgrounds and they want to, they want to pay it forward. We have the opportunity to learn together and we have the honor here on From the Ground Up to hear their stories, get to know them on a more personal level, not just learn from them, but be inspired in a way that's, that's a bit more formal, a more casual getting to know you conversation. I love getting to know people. What makes their heart sing? What brings them joy? And many of these questions are questions that I would ask if we were having dinner or a lunch together. So without further ado, I'm super, super excited to have with us today, Mr. Jeff Hoffman. Jeff Hoffman is an award-winning global entrepreneur. He's a best-selling author, film, and award-winning TV and music producer. Jeff has produced musical events, including concerts, tours, and charity events such as with artists such as Elton John and Britney Spears, NSYNC, Boys to Men. These are just a few of the big names he's worked with. In his career, he's been the founder and men member of multiple successful startups that you may have heard of, including Priceline and Booking.com. Jeff is also executive producer and stars in the groundbreaking TV series Going Public a show where viewers worldwide can invest in the startups that Jeff is mentoring. He's a frequent worldwide motivational and keynote speaker, having been invited to speak in over 70 countries thus far. He speaks on the topics of innovation, entrepreneurship, and business leadership. He supports entrepreneurs and small businesses on a worldwide basis and a global stage. Jeff is also the founder and CEO of World Youth Horizons, a nonprofit organization that provides housing, schools, food, and healthcare to children in need around the globe. He's recently received, in addition to many of his other awards, the Humanitarian Award from Disney and Be Great, as well as a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Los Angeles Tribune for his business and philanthropic contributions. And this, my friends, 
is merely the Reader's Digest version of everything Jeff Hoffman has done and continues to do. I'm going to bring on Mr. Jeff Hoffman. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> Hi there, Carmen. Thank you so much for taking time out of your incredibly busy traveling around the world schedule to be with us today. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So you are not on the road right now, I think. You said you are at home. A rare uh, office day. <laughs> <laughs> and I think this is a rarity, from what I understand. Um, and I think that's a great lead into one of the questions that I have for you, Jeff. Sure. Is, um, you, you have the opportunity to do pretty much anything else that you want to do in, in your life. But you do travel all around the world, helping people, guiding people, you know, sharing your experiences, giving your advice, supporting entrepreneurs and, and businesses all around the globe. Why? What drives you to do this? You don't have to. That's funny because my friends always say, uh, why don't you just uh, retire, uh, which I don't think I could ever do. <laughs> um, but, you know, I made a commitment uh long ago, uh, commitment to giving back to really to the, to me, which is entrepreneurship. And, you know, entrepreneurship, it's not a job, right? It's a mindset. Um, in fact, I always tell people, I don't really like the word entrepreneurship because whenever I ask people, especially younger people, but anybody, if they want to be an entrepreneur, uh, a lot, lot of people say no, because they say things like, I'm not really a tech person. I don't know how to build apps. Um, so entrepreneurship has this bad kind of tech only name. Uh, and, you know, if it was up to me, I would just relabel it self-determination. Because uh, the whole beauty of entrepreneurship is designing the future. Entrepreneurs are the ones that are creating their own future, future for people around them. And in some cases, the future for everybody based on what they're working on. That's the, and so I chose to be an entrepreneur. Hey, Carmen, was kind of funny in the journey because way back then, when I would tell people, uh, they're like, what do you do? I'd say, I'm an entrepreneur. And people would say, oh, you're a hustler. And I'd be like, well, you're making it sound illegal. Right. I'm hustling, right? I'm building a legit business. And they'd say, oh, so you got fired. And I'd say, no, I didn't get fired. This is what I do by choice. And they'd say, you just can't get a job. And I would have to say, this is my job. Entrepreneurship is a lifestyle of choice. But people didn't believe that right. early on. So um, <clears throat> because I chose this path and I didn't choose it for money, I chose it for freedom, right? The freedom to kind of, uh, you know, design the life, the job, the company uh, that I wanted to work for and then to make an impact on things around me. And because I was lucky enough that that worked, I made a commitment and I said, look, I've received so much from this choice to be an entrepreneur and been able to live a life that I probably never dreamed of. And so I said, look, the way I'm going to pay that back is I'm going to make this commitment to teaching as many people as I can for as long as I can. Everything that I've learned that might help them go live the life they dreamed of living. Right. So people can chase their own dreams. One felt like I got mine. Then I said, I'm going to go help everybody else try to get there, too. So it's that commitment that keeps me on the road. I, I, I really want to try to share everything I know with as many people as I can. Right. Oh, thank you. Well, and that's, I mean, I mean, this is one of the reasons why we're here today is because you do this work. I was the recipient of one right. of your presentations. And honestly, I wrote down some notes when I was listening to you and it's, you know, there are lots of bumps in the road when you're an entrepreneur and you take sure. on this lifestyle. I have gone back to look at my notes. I can't tell you how many times. And I'm so grateful because sometimes, as we all know, the life of an entrepreneur is can be lonely sometimes. Absolutely. And, and it's nice to be able to go back and say, that's right. Jeff said that. <laughs> okay. This is what I needed today. <laughs> it is a lonely lifetime. And you're right. This is literally the way that you and I met because you mm -hmm. told me about some of your goals and some of your dreams. And uh, so, you know, we've been connected ever since talking about what you were trying to do and, and how you're going to get there. Yeah. 
Thank you. And just on a personal level, I just, I honestly, there are a few people in my life that I am so grateful for, and you are one of them. And I appreciate it. It means a lot to me coming from you. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. And so I, I understand, you know, the, the place where some of the, and I also like to work with younger people because I figure they can learn from the mistakes that I've made. They don't have to make the same mistakes. Um, And so I, I feel like I can really understand where, when I see you, for example, you know, on, on your videos and your social media posts and you're, you're presenting to a group of young people. And I look, what I love to do is look at their faces Hmm and recognize, ah, okay, I see that light and I love it because this is why, I I suspect this is why you do what you do. Um, Somebody asked me recently, uh, uh, because I was all lit up about something when I was speaking, it was actually at college. mm -hmm. And one of the kids said, man, where do you get your energy? And I had to tell them from you guys. And I I obviously work with entrepreneurs of all ages. So it's not the age, it's the passion. Exactly. When people are excited about and passionate about what they're doing, I draw energy from them for that, for sure. Exactly. And I think that really that leads into my my other question that I was looking for an answer about is mm-hmm. when you see someone and it, what is it? Yeah, you've answered it, really. What is it that makes you want to mentor them besides the passion? Is there is there something else that you I mean, you're so your your expertise is this. So, is there something else that you see in them? Is it a combination of things, or is it just purely that that no, passion? You, you were you were right on. It's a combination of things. Um, the uh, the passion is required, right? Passion is the secret sauce to so many things in life, personally and professionally. And if you don't have it, you're probably not going to make amazing things happen in the world. But that's not enough. Um, the second thing, so it is a package of things, is your work ethic. Um, I, I know some incredibly intelligent people who've never actually done anything in their life because they have no drive, no work ethic. And I know some people, if you ask them, they would tell you they were average, and yet what the things they've done are amazing because their work ethic isn't average. So that's the next part, right? Are you willing to work hard. You know, I used to have this whiteboard in my office where I would write down things I've learned. And one of the things I wrote on there was everybody wants to be successful just till they find out what it takes. Right. And they're like, oh, wait, I have to do that. Maybe maybe I don't want it. Maybe I don't want that. So work ethic is the next one. There's a third. Um, The third is listening skills. You know this from the coaching business and coachability. Um, People are saying they want your advice, but if they're really just looking for someone that's going to tell, going to repeat the thing they were going to do anyway, they're not looking for advice. They're looking for validation. Um, And so somebody that's coachable, right? When I was, when I was building companies and coming up, I definitely knew that, that the amount of stuff I knew was tiny compared to the amount of stuff I didn't know. And if I could find people who've been there before me and done what I wanted to do, I would listen and absorb it, like you talked about taking notes. So there's that coachability. But then there's one last thing that that might be the biggest one uh, for me personally, which is um, which is the part we start conversation on the giving back and the paying it forward. Um, If we help, if I were to help to make you successful, what would you do with your success? And if in my mind, I believe that that you would use your success to make other li- people's lives better and to help as many people as you could, those are the people uh, ultimately that I choose that I really want to work with. If it's somebody that I, you know, has told me all the time about how they can't wait to be able to buy, you know, have a collection of cars, that's great. You are entitled. It is not my place to judge you, but I'm probably not going to help you. Right. I'm going to help the person. I'm not telling you you can't buy that. Right. I'm telling you that. That, the, it, that what I care about in life is the ripple effect, right? The ripple effect of paying things forward. And so when I meet people that have all those other things, but I fundamentally believe that if you were successful, you would make other people's lives better, that's the ones we help. We want to see the ripple effect of when people ask me, how do I ever pay you back? You don't. You take care of somebody else when it's your turn. So that's the biggest factor uh, but you were right that it's a package of things, certainly that I look for before I make a decision that I want to mentor somebody. 
Thank you. Thank you. Because that, I think when people listen to this or when they watch it, and, and I often talk about, even if, even if well, I'm sure that this is not going to be the case with this particular mm -hmm. interview, but even if only one person watches one of the videos, you know, and, and their life is transformed. Um, just previously, I, I had the honor and the pleasure of, you know, talking to a friend of mine who just finished his book and he basically, you know, he went from a, an addict struggling, you know, mm. just struggling in that world to becoming the deputy assistant to the president of the United States. Now wow. that, his name is Henry Lozano. I would love to introduce you to him mm. because his story is incredible. And he and I, we have a meeting like every one, you know, like once a month and everything that he's one of the first people besides you who actually took the time to listen to my vision of, mm -hmm. you know, wanting to create a company that employs first time offenders. And so that's where he and I, you know, our, our missions are, are intersecting because mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that need a second chance. And I've tested and created an opportunity where the company that I'm trying to build right now is going to employ first time offenders. I've tried it. We've done it in beta. It works. And so that's something that Henry and I are working on. But getting back to his his whole philosophy is the same like yours is he wanted to I mean, he's taken an incredible risk writing this book with all these details sure. about what he has done as a young person in trouble and his business colleagues, you know, everyone around him. And he says, but I needed to do this because it will help someone else. And even if it's just one person. Yep. So I feel like that is a common denominator amongst the people that I am now surrounded with and that I've invited onto the show. Every single person has said yes that I've asked. That's a great compliment for you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, but but my point being is that's that's how genuine everyone has been about, hey, yeah, I'm willing to take some time out of my schedule and share some insights for up and coming young people, Latina entrepreneurs. I mean, there's a whole world of people that are trying to do good that need people like you, you know, they, they just need that, that one nugget that changes things around for them. So thank you so much sure. for what you do. You and know that, you know, we also share that in common that, uh, that uh, I focus a lot on underserved communities. Um, I have a program right now, uh, mentoring um, formerly incarcerated people. Um, oh. And, you know, we also teach entrepreneurship mm. in prison to the people that are about to get out. I was in the Last one I was in was the actual, it was in the California Correctional Institute, um, where I was in prison all day uh, teaching people. Like you said, they're good people that made one bad decision. They're not bad people. Right. Um, and they're about to get out and they don't ever want to go back. Uh, so we teach entrepreneurship in the prison. And I work with uh, quite a few ex-cons that are out uh, to teach them how to start a legitimate business, especially because a lot of them will have a hard time getting a job because of it, what, you know, okay. because of their their background, as well as underserved communities. Like, I think you know that uh, one of my good friends, Pitbull, the singer, uh, he and I did a big program during together during uh, uh, during COVID um, to assist Latina entrepreneurs, uh, you know, the Lati Latinx entrepreneurs, Hispanic companies across the U.S. to survive. And uh, I've uh, done some work as well with uh, another friend, Mark Anthony, also a singer, um, and his organization. So uh, that that whole uh, uh, Hispanic and, and Latino market is one that's important to me personally as well. So you and I definitely have a lot in common in terms of focus areas. Yes, and, and I have some of the things that I know I should talk to you about now as all <laughs> this is coming up. Um, and But one thing that I did want to ask you, knowing all of this, and, and again, I've been able to watch you from afar, right? Um, there is, and I'm sure you've probably heard this 
uh, this topic that really comes up quite often in my community, in the Latino community, whether it's tech executives who I'm, I'm very, you know, I've from the area where I'm from, uh, a lot of my friends are in tech mm -hmm. and they have had incredible careers and they continue to have incredible careers in tech. And they are our foremost Latino leaders in the community. But this topic seems to come up quite a bit, the topic of imposter syndrome. And there's a variety of reasons for this. Um, what would you say to someone who's and are you familiar with the term? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. What would you say to someone who's feeling this way? And and have you yourself ever felt this way? I don't think it's just a Latino experience. I think no, it's, women, you, you are correct. Every I think everybody uh, goes through that um, without a doubt. The uh, uh, you know I had one recently actually because I was in uh, Saudi Arabia and. Uh -huh. They came looking for me, telling me that the, the king wanted me to come have dinner with him in the palace. Um, and you sort of look both ways and say, you must be looking for someone else. And they're like, no, he wants your opinion on something. So uh, I uh, definitely have those times. But then I, you see that everybody else has those moments because, you know, we'll use the example I use. Here's Pitbull, a guy that Mr. Worldwide that has 120 million social media followers and after uh, a dinner with him, when he reached out to me, um, his closest friend said, how did it go? I said, what do you mean how did it go? And they, he said, he was just nervous being around you. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> he's the performer. He's Pitbull. And he said, he just felt like he's this Cuban kid from the hood in Miami. And you're this well-respected businessman. And he just wanted to come across well. So I was kind of laughing because everybody has moments where you're like, do I really belong here? And you do, right? right? It's just hard and it's natural. And actually, I think it's healthy, right? Yes. The person that develops the ego that thinks, you know, that, that thinks they're all that, that's unhealthy because then you start thinking you're smarter or better than everyone and you're not listening. As long as you have that slight bit of doubt, what it means is you're always trying to improve uh, because you're always wondering if you could do better and be better. And as long as you have that, um, you will keep trying to improve and you will keep paying attention to how you show up in the world. So everybody has imposter syndrome, but I think it is a healthy thing to have from time to time because it gives you a chance to look in the mirror and say, wait, who am I and where am I? How did I get here and, and how do I get more of that? It's a good thing. I, I, I agree with you because I think there are, obviously you don't want it to control you. And right. there are things that we can help as, as coaches, as elders, as the OGs. You know, <laughs> I always talk to, when I'm talking to um, young uh, artists, uh, that's one of the things that I do focus on a great deal. You know, I, I, I've been singing since I was a kid, mm -hmm. but I haven't been a professional, you know, that long. And then I, semi-retired before COVID. And then, of course, I had a little more time during the pandemic mm -hmm. and decided to launch a new band at the age of 57. But one of the things that I talk about is that thing of, I'm always nervous before I'm going to speak, before I'm going to perform, before I'm going to sing, before I'm going to share a new song with someone. I'm always nervous. And what that has allowed me to understand is that because I care. Yes, I care exactly about the right. moment. I care about what I'm going to say. I want to do the best that I can. I embrace those butterflies and I don't let, I, I'm pretty good, I would say. <laughs> I'm pretty good at not letting those butterflies turn into, you know, pterodactyls. <laughs> but I, I, I would look for them. And usually if I don't have them, something's wrong. Either I'm not really into it or I'm doing something because I feel obligated or what, you know, just a multiple. If I don't have those butterflies of excitement and anticipation, something's off for me. Mm -hmm. So I have to admit, I was a little nervous today. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, speaking of which, you definitely send need to send me the links to your most recent music so oh, I can listen. I would love you. to see and hear it, so please don't oh, forget. Uh, but yeah, I agree with you. It, it, it helps you. You're right. It happens because you care, right? You're thinking about how you show up in the world. You're thinking of whether or not you're doing your best. And as long as you have that, you'll keep improving. Exactly. So I think that's I, a great I, thing. I'm glad you brought up that topic. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, it's, yeah, it's, it's something that I think is really, really important to highlight. You know, it's, I've, I've been very fortunate and I've been able to, with people like you in my life, I've been able to overcome a lot of challenges. And so this is one of the reasons why I love having these conversations. Um, I, I love learning, as I mentioned before, I love learning mm -hmm. new things about people. So I'm going to sort of switch gears because okay. we're going to wrap up in a little bit. But I just kind of right. sort of want to get a little bit more inside the heart of Jeff Hoffman, if you okay. don't mind. And and you can pass on any <laughs> of these questions. <laughs> so I noticed that. Um, you know, like, uh, again, I'm, I'm not stalking you, Jeff, but I do keep <laughs> up. And I know that you've shared some of your life adventures in these videos where you're you're holding a ginormous python and you've had <laughs> these celebrity moments and you're winning awards or you're judging competitions. Um, you, you're you speaking to audiences of 145,000 people. You've had such incredible incredible moments in your life. And, you know, we were talking about that before we went on this interview, before we went live. Is there something that's left that you've always dreamed about doing that you haven't done yet? Is, so, is something there still up next? A great question. Um, I'm very goal driven, right? I've you've, you've heard me talk about this over the years that Whatever the next goal was, I literally write it down, stick it on the bathroom mirror and focus on it. It's the next thing that I want to do, right? Like I was in tech when we were building companies like Priceline.com, uh, et cetera. Uh, and then I had I have a, a passion for music. Obviously, I don't sing it or write it, perform it, but I love being around it. So a goal was to start a music company. And I took some years doing concerts and tours. Then I had an interest in filmmaking. So I took some time to go make a movie and go through that experience. So each of these goals is something. And by the way, the, the key to that is that, you know, also written on my board is, is don't fear failure, fear of not trying. Because if I try something and I fail, I know, I found out, I tried it. I wasn't meant to be, it wasn't me. But if I don't ever try, I'm going to wonder, you'll wonder the whole rest of your life if you could have done it. And, and that, you know, kind of sticks in your gut. The example is if I'd never gone to make a movie, every time I ever went to a movie, I would sit there and wonder, could I have done this? So it's better to try. And even if you fail one way or the other, you don't have to wonder anymore. So I've always had this next goal and all these things that I wanted to do, I just went after it. Um, from, again, publishing a book to, you know, uh, launching a, a concert and tour company to producing movies, now producing television, doing some stuff in sports right now, um, all of that stuff. So th most of the stuff for me, uh, I kind of got blessed enough to cross it off. Um, there was, though, the, you know, the next thing, which is what I'm working on now, which was we talked, touched on a little bit. Um, there was something else I wanted to do. I, I wanted to uh, find as many ways as I could, especially with youth, but even though I work with entrepreneurs of all ages, to create opportunities for uh, children that would never have one. So I'm in the middle. That's the one I'm in the middle of now. Um, we recently opened a new uh, orphanage. We don't use that word. We just call them youth homes. Um, there's a negative connotation, I think, to the other. But they're orphans um, where in Uganda, where, where literally after the civil war there, where all the parents killed each other, there were just kids left in the jungles. So we just rounded it up to raise, rounded them all up, built physically built homes, and we're raising them in Uganda so that they have a chance at a decent life. Um, we built a school in Ethiopia after building a youth home because there was no school for the kids to go to. So we just built it. We do projects in the inner cities of the US. I just did one at the last, in Arizona during the Super Bowl week where we got 300 kids from the worst neighborhoods, the worst situations. And we taught them about, instead of playing a video game, they could be getting paid for writing it. 
We gave them a little class on how to write one. We showed them about tech and careers as developers and that they could write code. And by the time we're done, the whole goal is have those kids believing that they'd be uh, producing. They could have careers in tech and in gaming, gaming and in entertainment instead of running the streets and running drugs and being in games. So that's the next goal for me. I'd like to be able to look back at some point and see young people that had a horrible start and are now having a great life to know that we had something to do with sending them on that direction. That's the one that I care about now. And that's the one that I'm working on pretty much full time right now. Oh my gosh, Jeff. I, first of all, you gave me chills and then just my mind is ready to explode because Henry and I had the similar conversation and I was on a smaller scale. <laughs> that's what I used to do with my nonprofit was mm -hmm. with children and just, my intention has always been to at least just open up their minds of the possibility of life. Exactly. When, I was, when I was working as a behavioral coach, one of the, one of the situations that came up for me was uh, I was the liaison here in San Francisco between a school, the school district, the parents and the children in this almost ignored uh, school. Sure. And my job as because I can speak Spanish and, you know, my job was to be the, the voice of the child. And I'll give you a quick example because this is what, this is where my passion comes from is when people are so readily willing to, to throw a child aside. Right. There's a five-year-old and we'll call him Jose. And he was asked by the teachers in kindergarten, what he wanted to do when he grew up. And his response was, I want to be a gang leader. Oh, wow. Now, they immediately took this child and pretty much just cast him aside because of his answer. My job was, or at least what I determined my job was, is I have to find out why a five-year-old would say that. What's going on? It turns out, Jeff, his father was incarcerated due to gang activity. His uncles, all of them were incarcerated. His cousins were either incarcerated or, or had died. Hmm. But what they failed to hear in this young five-year-old was he never said he wanted to be a gang member. He said he wanted to be a gang leader. Yeah, And so I just... Anyway, in my presentation to the school, my whole thing was, why wouldn't you take that one word and introduce it into his life in a different way? It isn't the child's fault of how he's being raised in the world, but it's sure. our responsibility to try to change that for him. So to hear you with your project, honestly, Jeff, if there's something that I can do to help, please. We will, we will most you. definitely speak, of course. So I thank you. I, I know that you have got to go. And I, I, I know that I could probably talk to you forever <laughs> here. But before we, we bring this to a close, what brings you out of everything that you do? What brings you the greatest amount of personal joy? You know, it, it's any time. I get an unexpected and unsolicited message from somebody that says, you changed my life in some positive way. And it doesn't matter what it was. And by the way, you were absolutely right. There's no effort that's too small, right? Because it's that next one little girl. She might be the one that cures cancer. Right. So it doesn't matter if it's 100 people, 1,000 people, or one. Every one of those lives counts. And you don't know what that person might turn into because of your help. So I say that for anybody that's watching us to realize there's no effort that's too small. Right. If you say, well, I can't create my own uh, charity, like you know, like you and I have, don't. You just go help some child somewhere. Every little bit and every child matters. Every person you help, child or not. So, But for me, every once in a while, I'll get a totally unsolicited message that somebody, somebody will say, I just want you to know you in some way changed my life, positively impacted my life. And that's, you know, you can work hard, you can make money, you can buy cars, you can buy houses, but you can't buy respect. 
right? And, and you can't buy impact. You actually have to go out and earn that. And so when I get a message like that, that's, uh, that's something that they can never take away from me, right? You can lose everything else you have, um, uh, but if you impact someone else, uh, that kind of thing, and, and, and that, that, that level of fulfillment is, I can't even describe it. I didn't even know until the first time out of the blue, some woman said, you don't know me, but I was in the audience tonight and I was in a horrible spot in my life and your words literally changed everything for me. And I was like, just staring at it. I was like, I didn't even know that was a thing right. or a possibility. But it made me, you know, it goes all the way back to the first question you asked me about why do you keep doing it? And when people say, why don't you retire? It's because just one letter like that makes it all worth it. Yes. Where somebody said, my life was not going the way I wanted and you helped me get it there. Um, and that's probably the best thing I could ever do with my life. Way more important to me than starting another business or making another dollar. So that's what moves me the most. It's not, it's not the things that, you know, the people or the cool places, not at all. It's the lost person that I never met, maybe, because they were in the audience or saw something online. I had a 16-year-old autistic girl online reach out to me. And for whatever reason, Carmen, it was so bizarre and I thought it was a scam originally. She said, I don't connect with people, but when I feel lost and confused, I watch your videos, Mr. Hoffman, and it makes me feel better. And so I was like, obviously a scam. And the next thing is going to be some money request. So I said, if this is real, have your parents call me. And her parents called me. And they said, um, this is as weird to us as it is to you. But for whatever reason, your words help her. And so if you don't mind, please feel free to talk to her anytime. And that was years ago when we're really good friends. And again, the why doesn't matter. It, it's just the what. The what in this case is for some reason, something I've said somewhere in the long, a long line is helping her navigate her life. And that's the coolest thing I could ever do with my life. So that's the well, answer to your question. That's, that's incredible. And thank you for sharing that. I Sure. I feel silly because sometimes I get... <clears throat> I get these rushes of emotion because oh, it, that's a good thing. It's um, it's exactly very similar to what I felt the first time I heard you speak, and I knew that I was going to get the courage to reach out and contact you. And I'm so grateful that I did that. And thank you for spending this time with us. You know, for the listeners and the viewers, I, I know, I just know it that someone is going to take what you've shared with us today, and it is going to continue on. You are going to continue to change people's lives. Thank you so much. Thanks, Carmen. And uh, I am so glad we are still connected. <laughs> and I'm so glad you did reach out the first time. And by the way, don't forget to send me your music. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. And and thank you, everyone. Um, oh, Jeff, I'm sorry, before, oh gosh. How do people help you in the work that you do? How do they connect? Is there a website sure. a link that you would like to share? And I'll sure. be sure to put it in the socials as well. Okay, so uh, if you want to find me, it's uh, right. I, I'm most active on LinkedIn and you know my, my Instagram is speaker Jeff Hoffman. Those are ways to find me. Um, but uh, uh, if people want to help, uh, you certainly don't feel obliged, but my youth charity is called World Youth Horizons, and it's worldyouthhorizons.com. Uh, you're welcome to donate if you want. You're welcome to volunteer your time, or you're welcome to just look at the work we do. But uh, uh, that's the way to reach me, and that's the way to help if you want to get involved. Thank you for asking that, Carmen. Of course. Thank you. And and again, thank you all for tuning in. I'm going to have to go wipe the tears off later. But, <laughs> um, as, as we've seen again, you know, we can all reach out and give someone a helping hand. So again, very special thank you from my heart to you, Jeff, for, for spending time with us today. And I wish everyone good fortune as you continue to build your knowledge and your wisdom and your joy. And thank you again for tuning into From the Ground Up. Until next time, I'm Carmen Milagro. Thank you, Jeff. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>